We've all heard the saying that an army marches on its stomach. Food is one of the most important parts of a soldier's equipment. Without food, you can't fight. It's hard enough to feed an army today or maybe 50 or 100 years ago, but during the Revolutionary War, it was nearly impossible. Soldiers in this time period had a problem with rations, the lack of them and, and the fact that they were so poor. They had poor equipment and impossible conditions. Whenever I think I'm having a bad day and I need perspective, all I need to do is look back on this time period, these soldiers, think about the hardships they had. Anytime I want, I can go to the fridge, I can take food out, I can cook it in any number of cooking vessels. I can eat to my heart's content whenever. And every single night, I get to lay out on a warm bed and go to sleep for as long as I want. In past episodes, we've talked about the food, the rations, and how they were distributed. And even the Soldier's Feast episode, where we talked about the difficulties they had in getting their food. What I want to talk about today is their mess kit, their cooking equipment, how they prepared their food, what did they use for equipment in the field. Imagine it's 250 years ago and you've been given the assignment for a year to cook for six men and you have to be able to carry the equipment on your back. You have one choice, one cooking implement. What are you going to choose? Maybe a frying pan or a saucepan or a big pot. Well, what did they have in the 18th century or in the Revolutionary War specifically? They had the cook kettle. The cook kettle was the standard cooking implement, whether you were a British troop or an American troop. It was always about this size, somewhere between two and a half to three gallons, about 10 inches high and about 10 inches around. It looks like a bucket or even a paint can. It is basically the equivalent of a stock pot today. They cooked everything in this. And I think this was for a reason. The officers that were in charge of supplying the army, and they wanted soldiers to only cook one kind of thing. They wanted them to cook soups and stews. They didn't want them frying their food or broiling it. They thought that was a wasteful way of cooking and that this was the most nutritious way to use their rations. So they said, let's give them one kind of cooking implement. It's nice, it's lightweight, we can use it for a lot of different things. We can carry our supplies in it, we can carry our food in it, we can carry water in it. So it was a versatile piece of equipment. Now, sometimes people tried to use it for things that really they shouldn't. So you could try frying in the bottom of this and probably many did and ruined their cook pots. And we have documentation about officers complaining about their soldiers using things like this for frying and ruining their pots. Now these cook pots are fairly fragile. They're very light, they're easy to dent. If we fry in them, we will ruin the solder joints. So these are made out of either tin plated iron or just plain iron sheet iron that's hammered out thin and made it into this kind of a shape. There was a lot of difficulty in supplying these during the war because they needed a large number very, very rapidly and no one could supply that. We didn't have the kind of industrial base or supplies here in North America during the 1776 so that we would be able to supply, say, 10,000 cook pots right away. And so there was a problem with getting these. The design was very similar to this early on. They were usually supposed to be tin plated iron. They would have ears and a bale and a lid. It made it a really wonderful piece of equipment, but they couldn't supply them fast enough. And so they slowly changed the design. They took away the ears and they just poked a hole to put the bale in it and they got rid of the lid and they stopped using tin plate and they just started using straight sheet iron to make these so that by the end of the war, they were a little bit smaller and very, very plain. And they didn't last very long, max a year, and it was worn out and you had to resupply everyone with a new cook pot. Remember, each and every one of these pots is made basically one at a time by hand. As opposed to something like later on when we get to the Civil War, when they have factories that turn out these things, these pots aren't made like that at all. It's really just craftsman kind of workmanship making every single one of these. They're not easy to make. You have to hand form all these pieces, cut them all out by hand, fold these seams in just the right way, and then solder them all up and down and around so that they don't leak. Later on in the war, when these were made with just sheet iron, they would be very difficult to solder. And so we can imagine that the vast majority of them probably leaked and leaked a lot. 
When our tin pot is worn out, it's not done. They're not going to waste even a broken tin pot. They will cut up the metal if they need to, use it for something else, or there's documentation for them using these as a grater. They would take their bayonet and they would poke holes in this and it would make a very, very rough surface. It would make a grater. And sometimes they were issued something like just corn kernels. Now you can't really eat a hard dried corn kernel, but you could take this grater basically and grind that corn up so that you could make cornbread. I wanted to compare this with a modern military cooking equipment, but it turns out that the concept has completely changed from the 18th century to today. Today, soldiers in the field, they're fed with MREs, meals that are already cooked. There's no cooking that really has to go on. You can eat it right out of the bag. You don't need a cook pot. You don't even need a plate. Even a spoon is given to you. No mess kits really at all in the modern military. Back in the 18th century, you were given raw rations and the men themselves had to cook their food. Cook pots were issued one cook pot to every six men when they were available. You could use this cook pot obviously for cooking and if you didn't have anything else, you could also use it for eating. So you could leave the food in here and pass the cook pot around between the six men and eat directly out of your cook pot. Or if you had one of the earlier model cook pots that had the lid, you could use the lid as a plate and share that around. Sometimes they issued turned wooden bowls and if they issued these, it would be two bowls for every cook pot. So you'd have a wooden bowl per every three man. You would think that, you know, soldiers would be issued an entire mess kit. You would get a bowl, you would get a spoon and a fork, but it's not that simple. <laughs> and they just didn't have enough equipment to pass around that way. They did issue something like a iron cup. So this is a tin plated cup. This is probably even rarer than getting issued a wooden bowl. So this is the mess kit for the Revolutionary War soldier. It's big and it's clunky. It wears out quickly and easily, but things go on and everything gets much more streamlined. We get something like the mess kit for a World War II soldier, a simple canteen and a mess kit that folds together. It turns into a plate. It's got a frying pan. It's got a knife and a fork. This is the classic mess kit that we think of today. This is the simple soldier wear that every soldier would have. Each and every soldier had one of these, unlike having to share everything. And everyone had a kit that was exactly the same thanks to industrialization. There is evidence that at times spoons, knives, and forks were issued to soldiers. It would probably be a pewter spoon or an iron spoon. Sometimes we see knives and forks, even knives and forks with bone handles listed, but these would probably have been issued to the officers, not common soldiers, and knives. If a soldier's gonna need an eating knife, he's probably gonna have to use his standard soldier's pocket knife. Soldiers always had to come up with a new kind of solution to the equipment that was missing. So they might have to make their own equipment up. We've got things like wooden spoons. Soldiers were constantly making a wooden spoon. If they didn't have a plate or a platter, they were talking about using bark or boards or planks. Bowls were in very short supply and so they begged, borrowed, stole whatever they could use as a bowl. So they might have a pewter bowl that they got out of a household. There are documentations for using gourds as bowls and also this really interesting story about canteens. So canteens would wear out and there was a story about a canteen that lost the top of its head and it made a perfect bowl. The soldier using that, even getting supplies of flour in his canteen bowl. We have documentation for broilers made out of barrel hoops. They could put it over the fire and cook their meat right on top of that. Early on in the war, there weren't enough of the tin cook pots. Joseph Plum Martin talks about being issued a cast iron pot to carry and the soldiers complained so much. And in his story, Joseph Plum Martin talks about nobody wanted to carry it. He finally just threw it down and left it in a ditch 
because these things are like 10 pounds. And the soldiers were told that they had to carry their cook pots with them. They couldn't put them on a baggage wagon. They needed to have their equipment with them at all times. Maybe the pot would get lost if they put it on a wagon. So there were multiple times that they were told in orders to carry their cook pots with them. Now the soldiers didn't necessarily have to cook every single part of their meal. Many times they were issued bread, one pound of bread per day per man, and this bread was baked by bakers that baked for the entire army. There were people that were in charge of just baking bread. They had portable ovens and they would go around and they would bake the bread. But sometimes bread was not available to the soldiers and they were issued just plain flour. So a pound of flour instead of a pound of bread. They had to deal with this flour some way. How were they gonna cook it? They could either make fire cakes, which we've done on previous episodes, or a hard dumpling. You just mix this up with water and plop it right into your pot in with the meat that's boiling. Typical rations for a soldier were a pound of meat a day, a pound of bread a day. Sometimes there were also issued things like beer, or they might be issued peas or rice, vinegar at times, or if they didn't have regular flour, they might also be issued cornmeal. It's fascinating to watch the evolution of these very primitive and huge mess kits and what they turn into World War II and they're nice and compact, and then the MRE where the mess kit disappears altogether. I am sure some of you out there have experienced eating MREs in the field. It's not something that I have had to do, so I'd love to hear about that in the comment section. And even eating that way, MREs in the field, um, it makes me think about how easy my life is. And I am so very, very thankful.